Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over using the Pass tool on Android 13 and above. So this Pass tool is a CLI tool that I've been using since about 2016 on my desktop to manage my passwords. I've done videos about that one in the past. So yeah, let's get cracking here. By the way, this blog post is hosted on localhost right now. By the time you watch this video, it will be available on my site. I'll leave a link to that one in the description here. So I've been using this Pass CLI tool since about 2016, and I have hundreds of passwords uh, saved with it, right? If you're looking for the basics on using this on a desktop or a laptop, I do recommend checking out this uh, post here. Here. I'll leave a card to that uh, in case you want to watch the video because there is a video for this one too. You know, this post and video is going to be exclusively focused on getting it to work on Android 13. So you may be asking like, why even use a password manager on a phone, right? From a safety or confidence perspective here under normal circumstances, you know, saving your passwords in your device's browsers or apps password storage is likely fine, right? Even if you get logged out, you can always log back in without knowing the password there. But if you update your password on your non-mobile device here, you know, now you need to manually update it again on your mobile device, which is going to be kind of annoying to keep in sync, right? I know some browsers let you sync your profiles across devices, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of don't enable that option here. You can see even now, like I'm not logged into Chrome here. Something about that makes uh, me a little bit uneasy to enable that feature here. You know, also if you don't decide to use the password manager at all, you know, what happens if you've never traveled internationally, you know, and now you have an upcoming trip where, you know, lots of things are dependent on being logged into various apps on your phone. You know, in my opinion here, it's a little bit too much of a risk here to depend on just my mobile browser or the app to be able to log in without actually knowing uh, my password to log in here. Now, you could say, well, like, I don't know, I'll have a full backup and working past CLI tool on my laptop, you know, assuming you're traveling with one. And I agree, you know, I'm certainly going to have that here, but uh, I'll likely leave that laptop or actually it's technically a Chromebook that's running Linux there. I'll leave a link to the description on how I set that one up here. That Chromebook is from 2015 and it's still going strong here, nine plus years later here. But yeah, I'm probably going to just leave that in a hotel uh, for most of the day there. I'm not going to be lugging it around with me unless I really need to use it for something. And uh, yeah, it's also not impossible that that's the day that uh, that Chromebook or laptop decides to die at a very inconvenient time. So, you know, in any case here, if you're traveling solo in a very unfamiliar location in a country where you don't even speak the native language, which by the way, I'm going to be uh, doing that in the middle of June here, uh, it's sort of worth the extra 15 minutes to set this up for one extra level of redundancy, kind of like an insurance policy, which uh, for 15 minutes and, you know, using a free solution here, in my opinion, probably worth it. Um, but now you need to come up to one decision point here, right? Are you going to use a full-blown password manager or you're only going to save maybe the really important logins here? So if you're storing your passwords in Get with Pass, which by the way is like an optional feature of using this tool here, then it's really painless to sync things up here. But if you've watched my videos in the past around using pass, I'm actually not using the get feature there, which unfortunately means, you know, any reasonably new version of this mobile app that we're going to go over installing here, you know, won't be able to sync all of your passwords, but uh, don't fret there. So I am going to in include instructions here for both methods, you know, with and without get here, you know, really after all is said and done here, only a small part of the setup process is a little bit different here. Everything else is the same here. So I actually may end up even switching to use get just for this ability here, since wanting to have my passwords on my Chromebook and phone is a very recent one here since, yeah, I will be traveling internationally soon. So if I do, you know, I'll make a future post and link it here on converting your existing uh, past password store to using get here, you know, but this is like all outside of your phone. You know, I'm just going to cross link it here to make it a little bit easier for folks to see how these things are related. Um, but yeah, this now becomes a decision point for you, right? Do you want to sync everything? Sure. Use get and it's no problem. You know, otherwise you may want to consider creating a new password store on your mobile device that you can manually manage and keep up to date, which we'll cover in this post too, right? This could all have your, um, I don't know, maybe your mission critical logins like email, bank, any essential travel related sites for booking. You know, I know this has the same problem of not being able to keep it synced automatically with your main device, but really it's better than nothing here if you don't plan to use Git. So yeah, maybe now we can just go up uh, and cover some issues with modern versions of Android. They're not really issues with Android itself, but it is kind of an issue with this app here. So, you know, the official uh, name of this app here is Password Store. And, you know, if you go to the official Pass site here, which I'm on right now, and we scroll down to the bottom here where they have a list of clients here, compatible ones, you know, here is the Android Password Store app. And if we go here, yeah, that's the one uh, that I'm talking about here. Every time you see like the password store, that's that app. Uh, but yeah, okay, so this official app for the past tool on Android was written for older versions of Android. And now there's like these different security related policies that no longer uh, work or are compatible with modern versions of Android, but the app itself still works. It's just that, uh, 
Google's Play Store is going to prevent you from finding the app on the App Store, but uh, you can install it in a different way, which we're going to go over eventually in this post here. And there's actually, you know, quite a few different open issues for this one around, you know, getting this app to work with Android 13 here. But those issues appear to probably not going to be resolved. All of them have been have been closed up until this point in time here. And yeah, if you search uh, the App Store on your phone for Password Store, it's just not going to show up. But if you actually Google for it, like maybe on your desktop, you'll see that the app actually is available here. You know, it's sitting there right here, ready to go. But but uh, yeah, if you try to load that up on Android 13 or above in the App Store, at least at the time I'm making this video, it's not going to be available to be installed. And that kind of threw me for a loop because it's like, I don't know, like why is the Play Store not showing this app here? You know, I had to kind of go through a whole bunch of different issues and kind of really get uh, an understanding of what was going on. And then also even, it was a little bit, not tricky, but you know, I'm not actually super well versed in using phones. I typically use a desktop machine. I kind of just use my phone for a bare minimum. I had to pull together a couple different resources here to get all this to work. So yeah, I figured now would be a great time to make a video just going over all that stuff here. But yeah, okay, let's move on. And uh, we're gonna get to downloading that by the way in a few minutes here, but we first need to set up our uh, GPT key here on the phone before using this app here. And step one for that one is going to be backing up your current GPG key, right? Just as a reminder with pass, it's using your key here. And if you are gonna be syncing things up, then uh, you know, if you're using get whatever, then you will wanna have the same key on your main machine as well as your phone here. So let's back up our key first, and then we can go and import it uh, on our phone within this other app that we're gonna get to in a little bit here. So yeah, on your main machine, um, you can run GPG list keys here to see a list of all of your keys. And, you know, I'm not going to bother running this in my terminal. Literally, this is the output that you would see here. Um, this is not private information here, you know, but this is the key that you want to want to copy to your clipboard here. But yeah, that's not private. But I will mention this. And, uh, you know, if your key is set to expire during any travel times, you know, I suggest renewing it now, right? If you've followed some of my previous videos on setting up a GPG key, you know, you can have these things expire. I have mine configured to expire at uh, every one year, but you can see mine's expiring in December, 2024. I don't think I'm going to be traveling then. And if I am, then I'll renew it at this point in time. But yeah, just keep an eye out on that one because, you know, you can totally just renew your key live on your trip or whatever, but why make your life unnecessarily complicated, right? Especially if you're traveling, maybe under a little bit more uh, time constraints or stress than usual, then uh, yeah, might, might as well handle this ahead of time here. Once you have your ID in hand, then you can just run this command. And that's my ID. Of course, you're going to be replacing this with your ID here. And this is going to create an export of your GPG key. Do not share this file with anyone, by the way. This is a private file. You know, only put this on your trusted devices here. But yeah, that's probably gonna prompt you for your GPG password. Take a couple seconds to run and it's gonna, you know, emit out this file here in the current directory because that's where we've set it to do. And uh, yeah, now you have your GPG in key in a format here that you can import on another trusted machine, such as your phone or another device, right? Maybe on your laptop, if you happen to do this on a desktop, you know, this is way uh, one way to get that um, copied over here. You know, now how you actually transfer this file to your phone is up to you completely, right? I suggest using the flash drive to ensure the file isn't stored in the cloud or doesn't really hit the public internet. Um, alternatively, right here, you know, you can connect your phone to your device with a USB cable or uh, maybe even Bluetooth if you want. But yeah, flash drive worked for me really well. Might as well go for that if you have that as an option here. But okay, at this point, it will be expected that you have this file existing in your phone somewhere. So now, before we actually install the Password Store app, we need to install another app called Open Keychain. And this is another, you know, free open source, blah, 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 et cetera. It's a really nice app just to managing your GPG keys. You know, if we go here, it's, it's general purpose app here. You can even encrypt and decrypt things as well. And you should be able to find this one on the App Store and it's free. And uh, it's not directly related to the Password Store app, but the Pass app will use your GPG key that is managed by this Open Keychain app. So the homepage for this tool has a screenshot of what the interface looks like. You know, we just showed it over here. Um, it's one of those things where it's like actually quite intuitive here. I don't think you're having any trouble here at all. You know, really the steps are install and open the app. There's a little plus icon in the bottom right here. It may look slightly different by the time you watch this video, but you know, you hit that icon there and then you can just choose import from file because you know, we're gonna again, import it from that file that you now have on your phone and then yeah, once you're on that screen there after import from file, uh, you can just click the little folder icon there on the import uh, key screen, search your phone's file explorer, like whatever app that you happen to be using there, find your key there and then just import it and then you can just select your key and you're good to go. You know, at this point, after it's been imported, you'll likely see your keys details on the main screen screen of the app. You know, this is the main screen here where, you know, you hit the plus sign before. It's gonna have your name here with your details. Certainly gonna look a little different. The screenshot appears to be a little bit old. I know uh, whatever version I have of this app, you know, it shows a little bit more details there too. And uh, yeah, now you can actually go back to 
your file manager in your app and delete that secret GPG key there from your phone's file manager, right? The open keychain app is going to be managing that key uh, throughout this process here after, after it's been imported. Also, by the way, you know, I, I kind of skipped this real quick, but not super important. You can always click into, you know, your details here. Like if you clicked Alice there, you can see all sorts of different stats about your key. It's kind of nice to know, uh, you know, that information is available there. So cool. Now we have the, that out of the way here. Let's actually install the password store app. And this is kind of the last step, you know, after we configure this uh, once it's been installed here. But, you know, as we covered earlier in this post, we can't really install this app through the app store due to security poly policy changes with Android and due to the way the app is uh, been developed currently. So instead, we can download a specific version from GitHub and install the app manually. This is actually even suggested by a maintainer or a member of the project here. So, you know, there's this one blah, or, uh, issue here. You can see quite a few people open different issues here. But yeah, they're like, you know, Android places limits on how old of a vendor blah, 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 blah. Okay, so they're, you know, they basically mentioned just click this link here, go to our release channels, and then go to the snapshots over here, which is uh, what I've linked to directly over here. So the idea here is, you know, we're going to be downloading the latest release from GitHub. But again, uh, this latest release at the time of making this video right now, if we go over here and check this one out, uh, this is considered a pre-release. This is version like two something, right? 2.0.0. I did not install this version. Maybe by the time you watch this video in the future, this will be a stable release. I actually went for version 1.13.5, which is the latest stable release, at least at the time of this video here. You can see it's back from 2021. So, you know, if we go back to the releases here and if I scroll down somewhere, you know, we will see that the latest stable release right now uh, is this one here. Again, it's going to be up to you on which one you want to use here. But um, yeah, okay. So, You've downloaded this now on your phone, by the way, so you should have it somewhere. And um, well, actually, sorry, I jumped ahead of myself here. You know, which one should you actually download? Well, I suggest getting the uh, APS free version here. It's an APK file. So your options are basically non-free versus free. This has nothing to do with uh, accepting payments or not, or, you know, one of these apps is free, one of them isn't. You know, this had to do with certain libraries. I think there's specifics on this. You know, it's tucked away somewhere in their documentation. But um, yeah, the free version, I don't know, it doesn't require having a very specific, uh, I don't know, library or a tool installed that requires something about something. So that's horribly explained, totally misrepresenting that one. Uh, but yeah, you can go and uh, just grab the free one because it works completely fine, right? Uh, if you want to use the other one, feel free to research that one. But yeah, in any case, that's basically what I said here. You know, if their file name formats change, takeaway is to grab the free version of the APK, APK file. And now if you try to actually run this file on your phone, Android may block you from installing unknown apps, but it will provide a link to the settings to actually toggle that right then and there. So if you try to double click it, it may just put some like modal dialogue in front of your face and be like, by the way, if you want to install this, go to the settings and enable that one. And then there's a little, you know, checkbox pill thing that you can just uh, enable to do that. And once you've done that, then you can install the app. And now you can run it, make a shortcut like on your home screen here or uninstall it like any other app, really no different there. So yeah, cool. So now that you have the application installed, you know, let's set up the uh, password store app itself. So this is going to be a partially guided tour. It's kind of interesting, right? You know, I don't have like an emulator running that I can screen share here. So we're just going to go over a couple of screenshots that I made here. But remember, I'm using version 1.13.5 of this one. You know, the screenshots might be a little bit different in 2x or, you know, some future version. But I would imagine the steps are probably going to be pretty similar. You know, maybe things are laid out differently, possibly slight uh, words are changed, but the concept should be the same for, you know, you'll be able to get the gist of it, I think. So when you first launch the app here, it's kind of just like, let's go. So let's go. And then uh, after that, we kind of have our first choice here. Are we going to clone a repo or create a local repo here? And this is what the screen looks like here. By the way, I don't use my phone at all, but if anyone's curious, at least on a Pixel 4a, if you hit the power button and the volume down button at the same time, it actually takes a screenshot of uh, your screen, which is actually pretty cool. I'm still amazed of like little features on a phone that go a long way here. But yeah, you know, let's say that you're not using Git with Pass. You know, this is easy. You can just click uh, the Create Local Repo button here. And then on the next screen there, it's going to prompt you to be like, well, where do you want to have this new password store located? Uh, do you want to have it like on your phone's internal storage in a hidden folder? Or I think the other option was like maybe having it on an SD card. You know, again, it's up to you, but I went for the internal hidden folder in this case here because I don't want to have an SD card like connected to my phone all the time to access these passwords here. Uh, it's also going to prompt you at the very end there for your GPG key. So you can just uh, do that and then choose the one you imported from the open keychain app. So that app is just going to open automatically or whatever. Uh, you click it, you use like a little checkbox that you hit and you hit OK in the top right and you're good to go. And also, by the way, there's no pressure here. So, you know, the app does let you delete this local repo in case you want to switch to using another repo that you clone later. So eventually when everything is configured here, uh, you can actually find that option in the settings, which in the top 
top right, they're not shown here in any of the screenshots, but there's one of those little triple dots menus there. You can just go to the settings there and there is an option to uh, delete your local repo here that you have set up here. But yeah, now let's say that maybe you are using Git, you wanna have things synced up and you're not gonna make a new uh, password store here that's created locally on your phone here. So in this case, it will be expected that you have a remote Git repo set up somewhere, right? This video is not gonna go over doing that one, but this could be a private repo on GitHub, GitLab, or Bitbucket, or maybe you have a Raspberry Pi hosted somewhere that's publicly available on the internet or you know through a VPN, like whatever your options are, it's up to you here, but you will need a remote repo that's accessible somewhere and using SSH keys is fine. We're gonna get into that in a second here. So yeah, in this case, you know, instead of hitting uh, create local repo, you go to clone remote repo. I don't have any screenshots for this one here, but uh, it will prompt you for the Git URL, right? That's going to be the remote repo where things are hosted here. The branch name, as well as an authentication method, uh, I don't know off the top of my head what those were. I think it was SSH, password, and something else. Uh, but yeah, I suggest using SSH here. And uh, after clicking clone, it will say no SSH key is found, which totally makes sense, right? Because you don't have one set up probably on your phone there. And But it will provide you an option to generate a new SSH key. So go ahead and do that. I suggest using ed25519. I've made videos about this one in the past. I'll leave a card for that if you want to check it out. Unrelated to the phone, you know, this is just the SSH keys in general here. But yeah, you can just uh, choose that as a type and probably enable the option to protect it with uh, screen lock credentials here. So, you know, to access that key, uh, you will need to put in a fingerprint or your pin or whatever uh, mechanism you have set up there. So after your key has been generated, you'll have the option to either share it or click a later button. You know, I would suggest going to share it. It's going to open up some dialog box that will give you the public key that you can copy to your clipboard. And uh, if you do share it there, yeah, you can just copy to your clipboard and I don't know, either email it to yourself or just go directly to your repo on you know GitHub or wherever it is and just add that public key there. So now uh, that key will be able to access that repo there. So feel free to do whatever you need to do to get that public key to your remote repo. Now, the reason I suggest making a new key instead of maybe importing your main key on your dev box or laptop, whatever it happens to be here is, you know, this allows you to add your mobile device's SSH key to your remote repo. So, you know, if your phone gets stolen or compromised, you can actually just delete that SSH key from the repo there. In my opinion, that's way, way, way better than putting your main work machine's SSH key on your phone and then using that. Now, I actually went through these steps here. I didn't go, you know, to the point of uh, actually seeing Git work with the password store here. So I actually don't know what happens since, yeah, I don't have a Git repo hooked up, but I did click through a couple of those buttons to, you know, provide this information here. Uh, let's see what happens. I don't know. If it asks you for your GPG key, then yeah, just going back to the other app in here, when you're not using Git, you can just choose that from the other app that we installed here to have things running, uh, the Open Keychain app there, and then you'll be good to go here. And then also, I'm not sure if it's going to prompt you to configure your Git settings after cloning, such as, you know, the username and uh, email address of the committer. So the idea here is when you're using Git with pass, and this is not specific to the mobile app itself, you know, it will make Git commits for all the changes you make. Like if you add a new password, it's going to, you know, make a Git commit with this information here. But if it doesn't prompt you for that configuration, then I do know there is an option available in the settings. So once the app is fully uh, set up and you have some type of password store, you know, this is, by the way, indicated by having a plus sign in the bottom right, and we'll see that maybe in a second here. I forgot if I made a screenshot. If not, it's like super not important. But the, you know, those triple dots in the top right, if you go to the settings, there is a setting for like Git configuration and all sorts of other little settings there. Like if you need to change or Git repo uh, or, you know, things like that. So it's pretty quite configurable there. Uh, besides the settings, you know, that, that, that menu also lets you sync pull and push to your repo so you can keep everything in sync. Cool, so I think that's actually pretty much everything or close to it for keeping things in order uh, using Git. If it hasn't already pulled in your password, which by the way, I don't know if it's going to do that automatically, then yeah, go for it. You can maybe as well click pull or synchronize, whatever you want. I did look on their docs there and uh, synchronize, you know, it's just a shortcut for Git pull and then you can uh, push as well. So it looks like it does a pull and push there. Again, this command is literally copy pasted from their docs here. But yeah, at this point, you have things set up. It doesn't matter if you're using Git or just uh, made a new local store. Now let's actually go over very quickly just using the app itself, right? So on the main screen of the app after you've launched it, then uh, there's that little plus icon in the bottom, right? You know, you can either create folders there or new passwords and then fill out various fields in a very similar way that you may have used the command line tool, right? You can have basically the username and then the password and uh, you can make it multi-line as well. Basically, whatever you need there. There is one little subtle thing that's a little bit strange here. Not strange, but like it wasn't super intuitive on what the icons meant. But after you've typed in some information here to create a new one, then uh, you need to actually save that password. and. In the top right of that screen where you're editing or adding a new uh, username and password type of thing, there is an icon 
I can't even, I don't even remember what it looked like. Maybe I'll leave an overlay if I can find it here in the video. But yeah, click the one on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side. So it's like in the top right, there's going to be two icons. Use the left icon, or basically the first icon there. And uh, yeah, once you have at least one entry created, the app lets you access it, right? And this will actually prompt you for your GPG password here. And it also lets you determine how long you want to cache your GPG password, if ever. So I don't know, it really depends on your use cases here. Personally, I'd probably go with maybe one hour or maybe actually every time you access anything here, since you wouldn't want someone accessing your passwords without authentication if your phone were stolen and they broke into it somehow, right? Um, this will really be a personal decision based on like actually how you're using it, right? If it's uh, emergencies only because, you know, probably your password is saved uh, with your device itself within your browser or the app, then uh, I don't know, uh, getting logged out with no caching or maybe caching it for an hour is okay. But if you're accessing this app all the time, you know, a couple times a day or whatever, and you're you're not traveling, then yeah, maybe, I don't know, every 24 hours is reasonable. Or if you want to really live on the edge, maybe uh, cache it indefinitely, because I'm pretty sure that's an option too. But yeah, it's going to be your choice there on you know what you're doing, how much you care about security and what's being stored in there. So once a password is created, you can actually click the copy icon to copy it to your clipboard, and then you can view it, you know, edit it or use it however you see fit, right? Maybe you can paste it into some field somewhere. So on the main page, uh, listing all of your passwords, you can also select one or more of them and delete them, you know, in case you just want to play around and see how things go. Again, you can always go back to the settings to delete the entire local store if you just want to, you know, play around with, you know, creating some stuff, deleting some stuff, and just see, seeing if it's going to be good for you. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You should be good to go to securely use your passwords on the phone. And yeah, this uh, blog post here was just mentioning that the video, you know, it's not going to be like setting up an emulator to live look at some stuff like that. But with that said, yeah, I don't know, if you do have things set up with Get, let us know in the comments below what this process looked like. You know, is there certain things that I missed here? Maybe something inaccurate? Did it really like automatically set this up? I don't know. But yeah, if you liked the video, please give a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.